now, head chef and catch of the day, Chef Taco. <laughs> Hello, I'm Talk of the Octopus, and tonight, I'll be cooking your dinner. <coughs> On the menu this evening is a lovely, um, well, it's meatloaf. I know, I know, I was resistant too, but after a little tinkering in the lab, you'd be surprised by how good it can be. Trust me, you're going to want to eat this. But before we get started, I'd like to take a moment to answer the many, 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 um, okay, three fan emails that I received. <clears throat> Dear Taco... I really, really, really love the show. You're lots better than that silly bomb fellow. I was hoping you could explain the difference between a pinch and a dash. And if it's not too much trouble, an autographed picture would be lovely. Yours truly, Barbara Lolly. Can do, Babs. In cooking parlance, a pinch refers to dry ingredients, while a dash refers to liquids. In terms of measure, a pinch is less than one-eighth of a teaspoon, a dash anywhere from three drops to a quarter teaspoon. As for the photo, check your inbox. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. All right, who's next? Let's see. Uh, dear Taco Honey. Ooh, <laughs> I like it already. Taco Honey, you're doing it wrong. On your show last week, you spilled beer in your risotto. I know you're clumsy, but try to be more careful, dear. I'm sure you'll get better. Love, your mother. P.S. Thank you for not calling me on my birthday. I'm sure I would have been... Too busy to come to the phone. Look, Mom, I told you, the alcohol will burn off, leaving you with a nice, hoppy risotto. <sighs> I never should have shown her how to use email. Uh, let's try one more. Dear Mr. The Octopus. As a renowned scientist and noted octopus expert, I have a few questions regarding your claim of cephalopod heritage. Number one, where is your beak? Number two, most octopi are nocturnal. Why aren't you... Number three, when in danger, why do you not simply change color and blend in with your surroundings? Number four, how about a recipe for chocolate chip pancakes? Respectfully, Dr. Otto Octavius II, Rikers Island, New York. <laughs> well, Doc, as an octopus expert, I'm surprised you don't know the answers already. But I'm always happy to help out the scientific community, so here's that recipe for chocolate chip pancakes. Be sure to use the extra small chips as they tend to melt a little bit better. In response to your other queries, I do have a beak, but as I'm sure you're aware, it's not in a TV-friendly location. Mm -hmm. My sleeping patterns are my own business, but if you must know, I do enjoy the nightlife. I like to boogie. As for why I don't go changing my color willy-nilly at the first sign of trouble, the answer is simple. I don't scare that easily. <laughs> the spiders. <laughs> oh, all those legs give me the willies. <laughs> so, I think that's enough email for one show. <laughs> Let's make some meatloaf. The first thing you need to know about meatloaf is that the meat matters. I like to use a blend of beef, veal, and pork to get the best possible flavor, texture, and firmness. Many meat markets sell a similar meatloaf mix, but if you make your own, you can tinker with the percentages or make substitutions. When I'm in the mood for something a little spicy, I use andouille sausage instead of veal. Uh, excuse me, Chef Taco? What? Is the spider back? No, but you're still, well, not all there. What? Oh, hmm. It might take some time for my skin to change back to its normal color. How about if I wear a hat? Better? Back to the meatloaf, then. Once you've got the meat figured out, there are a few basic building blocks to consider, specifically filler and moisture. For the filler, I prefer a toasted breadcrumb mix, although saltine crackers work pretty well, too. Both help bind the meat, but don't add a lot in the flavor department. They will, however, suck the moisture right out of the meat if they're not given a little liquid beforehand. I prefer half and half, but whole milk works just as well. My mother puts ketchup in hers, which makes it taste like a meatball. This would be fine, except my mother's meatballs suck. Well, they do. Excuse me, Chef Taco. It's your mother. Ah, uh, tell her I'm not here. Ha <laughs> get it? I'm not here. I'm not, uh. Right. Okay, where was I? The pan! This would be your basic 9x5x3-inch loaf pan. Perfect for raisin cinnamon, whole wheat nut, Russian rye, and many other wonderful loaves of bread. But not meatloaf. If you want a crispy crust with a delicious glazed top, a loaf pan is going to work against you. Hey, I'm back! Okay, let's talk extras. 
Other than the basics, there really aren't any mandatory ingredients needed to make meatloaf. There are some common ingredients like eggs, bacon, salt, pepper, garlic, and onions that do appear in most recipes, but beyond that, feel free to experiment. For my own recipe, I like to add red and green bell peppers, celery, scallions, uh, shallots, chives, oregano, basil, red pepper flakes, cumin, Dijon mustard, and sometimes mm, a little nutmeg. Now, once you've got your ingredients prepped, it's time to get messy. There really isn't a better way to combine your meaty mixture than with your own two hands, or tentacles, as the case may be. Make sure to get the ingredients evenly distributed, but try not to overmix. If the meat seems overly sticky, add a little more liquid. Once the mixture is ready, remove it from the bowl and work it into a long oval shape. My recipe calls for a loaf about 16 inches long, one and a half inches high, and five inches wide. If you want to make yours shorter and taller, that's fine, but it'll take a little longer to cook. The final step before baking is adding a topping. I like to use a ketchup glaze made with brown sugar and vinegar. A few strips of bacon are also lovely, but if you're into counting calories, skip them. When everything is ready, get it into an oven preheated to 375 degrees and bake until the internal temperature reads 160 degrees, about 40 minutes. When it's done, let it rest 10 minutes before serving. I like to serve meatloaf with my famous garlic smashed potatoes and maybe a little sautéed green beans, but any traditional comfort foods will do nicely. And be sure to save the leftovers for meatloaf sandwiches. White bread, ketchup, and a little cheese. Mmm, smells like growing up. Of course, no amount of cheese and condiments could save my mother's meatloaf, but Bobby Bottomlow's mom made a wonderful Havardian pickles combo. Mmm, yummy. Chef Taco, it's your mother. Uh, yeah. Uh, tell her I can't come to the phone because I'm not here. <laughs> oh, wait, I already said that. Uh, tell her... Wait a minute, no. Try this. Tell her I'm... Taco the Octopus, show yourself this instant. Now, listen up, mister. I could cook circles around that Barbie bottlenose and her big blouse any day of the week. My meatloaf is just fine. If your father were alive to hear you say such things... Dad's not dead, Mom. He lives in Santa Cruz with Aunt Dee. Please stop talking. <sighs> Taco, honey, I know you don't have one, but try to show a little backbone. It's just a spider. Thanks for stopping by, Mom. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> uh, right, um, well, for a few more meaty bits, check out the special tips and tricks sprinkled throughout the show. And be sure to visit the Food Science Lab at EightLegged.com for a look at what happens to meat when it cooks. Gah! Uh, no, 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 I'm not afraid. It's just a little spider. He can't hurt me, despite all those little legs. I'm not afraid. <laughs> yeah. Get off, get off, get off, get off, get off! Oh, that's my beak. Ha-ha! <laughs> Uh-oh.